Hey there, fellow changelings. I am Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. And uh, we know that uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight is out and you got the Fae on your mind. Uh, so we're going to walk you through some of our favorite uh, DMs Guild Fae supplements uh, on today's Web DM. Hey there, Web DM peoples. We have got a coupon code for you. If you use Web Wild, you will get 15% off of $15 or more purchases of community created uh, DMs Guild products. That's good through the end of September. Uh, but if you want all the info, check down here in the comments and descriptions and uh, we'll get you hooked. All right, Jim, we got ourselves another uh, DMs Guild sponsored show here. Uh, and today we're going to be. Uh... We're going to be taking a dip into the into the Feywild. Jim, would you think kind of uh, just perusing through the options there? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of really cool stuff on the, the DM's Guild for the Feywild. And, like, because there's not a whole lot of, like, official D&D material on the Feywild, there's really just, like, a couple of fourth edition supplements and information in the, the 5e DMG until Wild Beyond the, uh, uh, the Witchlight comes out. Um and so it's really interesting to see what's there and how various people have taken sort of similar ideas and and worked them in different ways of different expressions of them. And there's a lot of really good stuff there. Uh, we have omitted any uh, monster manual or monster supplement uh, type uh, products from our recommendation, if only because we're not sure what monsters are going to come out in the new uh, Wizards of the Coast supplement and wanted to focus more on like player options, DM tools uh, this go around. So there's a ton of stuff and I think it'll be good supplemental material for those DMs that want to run a game set in the Feywild and want to have something that's like maybe going to fill in gaps of what the official material has or to offer more uh, for their players uh, as mm -hmm. they navigate this world of, you know, strange customs and and whimsical creatures and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, where, where are we going to start here? What's our what's our first option for these uh, for our listeners? Yeah. I'm, uh, the first option, our first recommendation is Dramatis Persona Archfey Patrons. Um, and this is a supplement uh, by Andres Lilo, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Azazel Olbrinter. I hope I got that right. And uh, I really I love this one. Be <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, I really love this one because, like, on the surface, it looks like it's just for Archfey Warlocks, you know, to, to vary up their patrons. And there's, like, 22 new patrons for Archfey Warlocks in here. They break them down yeah. in courts and then uh, further subdivide them. There's there's the classic sort of summer and winter courts and then there's uh, little hidden gems like the Boogeyman or the Mother of All Hags, the, the Trinket Lord, yeah. uh, where you can like borrow <laughs> your patron's magic items. <laughs> really cool. Um, but as I was Just reading, sure I was like... Them. Sorry. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't want to catch those late fees. Uh, as I was uh, reading through it, though, I was really struck by how, like, in addition to there being like 22 full subclass options for your uh, Warlock players, these are also fodder for like charms that the Fey, uh, you know, lords and ladies that your players will meet uh, in the Fey Wild can gift to anybody. Their abilities you can add onto monsters, you can give them, uh, you know, via the Eldritch uh, Initiate feat, uh, various invocations and spells that are otherwise just for warlocks that are found here. So, what I found is like really a really treasure trove of abilities that are meant to be used by players. And so you can give them these, even though they don't necessarily have a warlock class level with the Archfey patron selected. Uh, you have that flexibility. And, you know, just I love a resource like that where I can take these things apart and refit them to some something else. Uh, in that sense, I found it really, uh, really valuable. Yeah, yeah, no. And uh, like you said, there's there's a, there's a couple of these patrons that are that are really, really fun. Um, like yeah. I, I really like the the maiden <laughs> of the moon, the the whole idea of like the uh, the moon huntress uh, kind of build yeah. um, <laughs> and dealing with like frighten like frightening your enemies and hunting them down oh, yeah. like 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 any good predator would. Uh, but the, just the 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 mystique uh, of some of these patrons, like you're saying, like the boogeyman, uh, just like. Like reading through that, it's just kind of like, mm, yeah, that's that. If you want to be a real uh, a real creeper, but you know, <laughs> the, the creeper for your team, like, 
for your team. Exactly. I've played yeah. that character before, certainly. Yeah. Different different expression. But I like yeah, I'm I'm the boogeyman for, for my team. <laughs> I want you to be afraid of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fun archetype to play, yeah. With talking about all these patrons, though, uh, I have to remind everyone that uh, if you uh, go over to Patreon and become a patron of ours, uh, you'll have access to over 200 podcasts there, uh, where it's just me and Jim and Emma and just guests sometimes, uh, just rambling about all things uh, tabletop RPG. So uh, go ahead and check that out. But to get back to this book, yeah. Um, yeah. What what I like uh, also about it is is just the this the snippets of lore that you get here and there. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. fairy tales are are something that you know have been in our literary history for since the beginning, right? Like since we started right. writing. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, walk us through some of that. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the 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 way that they have the lore sort of broken up into into little segments and chunks it's very bite-sized it's not overwhelming it's really just enough of what you need to like get an understanding on who the the patron is and like how you can portray them and in that sense it really does have a, a a mirror quality to fairy tales where it's like not everything's exhaustively explained or or the relationships completely mapped out it's, it's left kind of fuzzy and fluid in a way that i really enjoy and at the same time clearly has a distinct take on the lore and in that sense, if, if, if you're sort of floundering on what do I do with fairies, how do I present them, um, this will mm-hmm. give you enough to chew on without drowning you in detail, uh, which I, I really appreciate. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, well, not everybody's going to have the Sea Lords uh, as their patrons, so they'd have to worry about <laughs> Certainly that. not, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but like you were saying also with the spells, though, um, the fact that they also have spells for other classes... Um, yeah. Other than just warlock, like they have, you know, like disarm for the for paladins, which I, it's an interesting spell, um, <laughs> depending on how honor bound your paladin is about their combat. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the other thing to me that's that uh, that wanted we want to touch on here is is the art in this book is yeah. it's very atypical for a, for a five E product. Yeah, yeah. It uses public domain art from the 19th century uh, by uh, Arthur Rackham and John Tenniel, and it's I, it, like these are books of fairy tales and the like from a time when like people were just starting to like write them down and publish them and, and bring them out of like folklore tradition and make you know make them accessible to a wider audience. And so a lot of these illustrations are very evocative. It's a completely different style than like modern fantasy art, and so it has like an old time antiquated fairy tale quality to it in addition to just being like good art like it's just you know i really like it i like the use of public domain art uh, especially from the 19th century because there's just a lot of really good stuff that is freely available Mm -hmm. and evocative um and and really carries with it a sense of of like otherworldliness because it's old (laughs) you know (laughs) that's really yeah to me that's really not much more to it than that (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like when you when you when you see the art of the little goblins peeking through the door at the baby, <laughs> like like yeah, oh, exactly. I know. I know what happens next. <laughs> right. like, I know what happens next. I've heard know. this one. Call the adventurers. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and also the fact that you can have the Mad Hatter as your patron is another. Uh, yeah, like I don't know. Place. It just uh, that that really stuck out to me. Like yeah, why wouldn't you? You know. <laughs> why not? Alice exactly. didn't go chase him in there for nothing. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, l- uh, speaking of random encounters, um, let's move on to our uh, our next book here, which is uh, Feywild Encounters. It's a random encounters table uh, by Duncan Thompson. Um, yeah. What uh, yeah, what's, what's, what's the biggest book. thing that? What's the thing that? Uh, you know, everybody here knows how much we love our random tables. So, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. But what's uh, what's something about this? The first thing that kind of stuck out to you, Jim. I mean, the, the first thing that stuck out to me is like these, this is the sort of thing I would expect to be included in, uh, you know, in an official supplement for, uh, for any region or, or zone or whatever. It's like baseline tables, locations, non-combat, all kinds of stuff. And fifth edition has been hit or miss as to whether it includes. Sometimes it has that, those sort of like basic tools for sandbox play and, and improv uh, type games. And other times they're left out or, or not enough. And so, like, we don't, I don't know yet <laughs> what's going to be in the official Feywild supplement. I hope we'll buy uh, next week. But um, 
what I uh, what I'd hope is that there's something like this. This product, though, Random Encounters or sorry, Fey Wild Encounters, is superb. Like I, I rolled up some Random Encounters with it, like immediately. You know, the fact that it gives you a creature, a, a setting for that encounter that that really captures the spirit of the Fey Wild, and then like different items that could be there from just like trinkets and things to actual like powerful magic items. It's got all sorts of stuff that um, that I that I really love in a in a small package, easy to use. And when it comes to like the encounter tables themselves, the fact that there are multiple ways to roll on them, that they've arranged mm-hmm. that, that they've arranged the tables so that you could roll a d20, or you could roll a d8 plus a d12, or two d10, or three d6, and like each one that you choose, there the way that they are arranged is meant to accommodate that. And so, like, if you want the wildest results possible, all things on the table equal, you roll a d20. But then the, if you start rolling a d8 and a d12 or 3d6 or 2d10, like, the order of entries is such that it produces these different results. It's like, yeah, I don't want a, a hag to sh- like a night hag to show up for my, my first level party. Uh, then you just don't roll a d10. You roll one of the arrangements that's never going to roll a 1. Uh, or sorry, a d20. Mm-hmm. So that that is this is all outlined in like a paragraph at the beginning so it's very accessible very easy to use and like i said the encounters that i rolled up with it were like this is great like i could like i would just need this in some cases to prep for and run a game in the Feywild. wild it's that useful um mm-hmm. yeah loved it yeah and also including including beasts uh from volos and uh, morden canaan's tome of foes and and actually yeah. marking those on the tables so that you know where yeah. to find them uh is uh, to me is yeah. immensely helpful in that but yeah i i do agree right. like it, having it, the, the 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 different swinginess of using different die types like mm-hmm. it it makes for more interesting you know encounters uh just because of the yeah. the, the bell curve there and exactly, exactly. And it means you get a lot of use out of those tables um, by, based on how you use them. And then, like, they have that for the encounters, and then they go right and have a similar arrangement for the location tables, where they'll have, like, these are, like, hazardous locations, baleful, uh, I think they call them in the supplement. And then there's, like, yeah. wilderness locations, and then semi-civilized, and then there's details that you might have there. Like, is there something else there? Is there something magical or, or just weird uh, that's present? And so... Like a lot of the complaints about random encounters are that they lack context, they're just perfunctory or whatever. And once you start like, all right, it's these specific creatures in this specific place, and then it goes on and says like, this is what they're doing, and here's some complications for you. So mm-hmm. by having activity tables and complications, as well as like what kind of loot might be there, really it's a comprehensive, uh, you know, all all you need <laughs> in terms of like running adventures in the Feywild. Uh, especially if you have the kind of game where players can kind of wonder as they as they choose, and you might have to make something up off the top of your head. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, having them just wander into an area of like uh, what was it, a quicksand with like enticing signs, like yeah, go this way. Yeah, this is yeah. Where you're go. <laughs> yeah there's Damn some nasty fate. hazards. In it. <laughs> Those sorts of bitches. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's all presented fairly accessibly. You know, there's not a lot to have to digest at the table. You read the entry uh, and run with it. So they're relying on things like use this spell in place of this uh, environmental effect, things like that, um, which I think works for for the kind of product that it is. Also, the like I love the traits that they have. Um, yeah, for for adding creatures. on like new monsters and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that and Feywild crossings. Just to spice things up, yeah. And, like, to loop it all back together, there are supplemental tables in the back of it for, like, okay, once you've, like, used these tables a whole bunch, here's extras that you can mm-hmm. then get some mileage out of. If your players are tired of fighting displacer beasts and dryads and, uh, you know, things like that, then what about a planar visitor or some humanoids on their mounts as they're, you know, hunting through the Feywild or something? Like, it r- really is comprehensive, and to me... It's one of those products where if you if you've never played in a style of game where the, where you've embraced the emergent aspect of it, like I don't know what's going to happen as a DM, I'm going to be surprised today. This is the kind of product that really uh, boils that down to its essence and says just roll something up and see what happens, see see what it's going to be like. We don't, no one knows yet what their journey through this magical wonderland of of fey beasts and and you know mercurial elves is going to be like. Let's find out together. 
and and that's a very exciting and thrilling uh, type of play and very Feywild in its approach as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, it has just enough, uh, you know, items in the back that are Fey related uh, as far as like trinkets and treasures and all that. Um, mm-hmm, it's, uh, mm-hmm, it's good mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> uh, anything, uh, any last uh, words on this one before we move on uh, through the veil? Uh, no, no, I, 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 I clearly uh, really think think quite highly of it. I, I love these kinds of supplements where it's just a big bunch of tables. Uh, so I, I think it's um, probably my favorite of the three. <laughs> mm-hmm. Last uh, but not least, uh, it, it, in fact, it's the most uh, book of the of the three yeah, that we're reviewing mostest, here. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's it's a chunky boy. Um, but it's uh, Through the Veil, uh, Treasures of the Feywild uh, by Elise Crittel. Uh, uh They're the producer and the lead, uh, the project lead, but there are many, uh, there's many, many writers uh, yeah. on this one. Uh, oh, yeah. But uh, this is, I believe, their second uh, book, the Through the Veil book. Um, yeah, there's a book of adventures. Uh, this one is more like just magic, not just magic items, but like adventuring gear, consumables, things like that. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it's it's one of those big collaborative projects that you see on the DMs Guild. And I like seeing these because I both like recognize names uh, in the author that I know through you know, people through Web DM. Um, Keith Mon is a contributor to it, others. But what I also like is discovering new talent, new designers, and new people who are out there that like. Like oh I I wasn't aware that you're you were making this cool stuff <laughs> like I, I would love to see more, uh, and so I like mm-hmm. the the big projects like this because you do get a chance to see uh, a wide array of talent. My one desire that I wish for these is that the authors were attributed in next to their content that they contributed so that um, so that we would be able to, to tell like oh this is so and so's magic item or whatever, but. You know that it's hardly a mark against uh, Treasures of the Feywild because this thing is like stuffed with magic items and loot and gear, yeah. and like it's a it's a way of expressing the magicalness of the Feywild in 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 something that's really concrete because you're giving these things to players, and mm-hmm. so like one of my favorite items in it are these uh, living bows of the Fey realms, which are like you've got a like if you get the one for the Feywild, you've got to plant it in sunlight and water it, you know, once a day for an hour. This this magical bow that you have because it's a living plant, and mm-hmm. you know the 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 fact that it's not just like a plus three bow that does whatever, and you don't have to worry about it. Like that, you need to take care of it. You need to nurture it. Is one of those things that I find like enhances and enforces the magicalness of it. And and it, each of the magic items in here is like that. Uh, and uh, really, really impressed by him. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the one that stood out to me that I loved was the uh, Mace of Many Voices. The fact mm. that you have a, a sentient <laughs> magic item that's a bit, a bit schizophrenic. It's it has sure. two voices in it that are one's one's more of an, uh, I believe more of a like a caster, and the other is the essence of like a, a warrior. So it's more yeah. like, hey, let's we should look at this out. Now we should kill it, you know. And uh, <laughs> you know, if you fail your 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 check, then you are susceptible to those voices sure. and what they say. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, any it's kind of sentient guy. item like that to me is always going to is always going to stand out. Um, yes, there's a lot of really fun sentient items in here. And and a lot of ones that are like semi sentient or imply like it's a living creature like to me the psychic uh, grass blade was one oh, of those yeah. that I was like just reading the lore of it. I was like this is cool. Like this is like, this is a living creature that just a psychic blade of grass that's like yeah, they, I can't get anywhere. Mm-hmm otherwise life's kind of boring in a field of grass can i like be a weapon for you and live in your live on your arm and like we can have a psychic bond together and i'm like yes yes you can that's 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 great like that's a sword like I, that's a blade I, 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 weapon. It really yeah yeah uh it, I, i'm i'm assuming it's a callback to uh finn's sword in adventure time he has a grass sword uh for a while i forget how he gets it but it's uh it's it's with him one of his many uh magic swords that he has and so i was so i was like that's i i want one of these i gotta have a character that has this um and then the star yeah, pretty- smashing star smashing disruptor which just is awesome name uh, just <laughs> love the idea of, of a mace that we can smash stars with and, and then, you know, smack people with their power. Uh, it's just, it's really cool. Very cool magic items mm-hmm. in this one, especially the weapons. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I had a I had a double take when I got to Snow Slash, and I was like, Snow Crit, oh, dang it. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> didn't know how they were going to fit that a cyberpunk into a Fey thing, exactly. and then I realized it was just, you know, be careful. Yep. You know, what you see yep. is an illusion. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like exactly. like you were saying, though, the 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 bits of like lore that they fit with these with uh, with all these weapons and or I mean all these items yeah. is to me like if you are if your fey realm that you're making is a little sparse like you could just use this book and fill in the gaps with with the items themselves yep. because like 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 you said each one of these has a little blurb uh, about it that certainly does to me is yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. The, 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 the further in you go, there's like weapons and armor and then you get to the collections, right? Where they start mm-hmm. like really digging in and, and, and ramping up the lore because it's like these, the collections are, are usually either themed items or part of a set or something like that. And, and, yeah. and it's quite comprehensive. <laughs> like, uh, th- this is a, this is a meaty product that you're going to be able to get a lot of use out of, uh, not just for magic items, but like as inspiration for, for other things. Um, but the the fact that they've got these these sets that you can collect and and like learn about and like oh the the great owl like I, I have the cowl where do I get the cape you know things like that mm-hmm. you know and and by putting something like that in the game you can encourage players to be more proactive and to like start setting their own goals the the classic example from just baseline D and D is the hammer of thunderbolts belt of giant strength gauntlets of ogre power combo which in older editions at least if you got all three of them you'd like kill giants instantly and things like that i'm not sure in fifth edition what it's like but i feel like those are the kinds of things that you can like you can give a player one piece of that and and then say you know there's other things out there that it'll, it'll get better or it'll do this other thing uh, and you can go find it. Here's how you figure that out. Like here, I'll, I'll show you the first step on that path, so that to get you started, yeah. is a good way to like get players motivated in setting their own goals and being uh, more uh, proactive. Oh, definitely. Uh, the The discoveries of the flickering beast were were that was one of my favorites <laughs> of these. So, it's yeah. just like a bunch of bunch of blink dog, you know, artifacts. Uh, so you can just. Uh, you want to just teleport around <laughs> everywhere, like, and do yeah, something a little different yeah. with each one. Uh, that'd be a fun if you if you had a, a, a more of a like a martial character like doesn't uh-huh. have a lot of magic about them. That yeah. would be a fun. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Hell, even Absolutely. if you have a lot of magic about you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, the champion fighters need some love. Give them some magic items. Let them teleport around. Come on. Mm-hmm. They could be surprised what uh, what kind of hurt they can lay down on uh, folks, but like. To me, moving beyond like the weapons and the and the big ones, because so far we've talked about like the legendary items and the very rare, or whatever. But like, there's a lot of common items, and, like starting with oddities of the fairy folk, and then moving on to adventuring gear and consumables that are like, these are like every day. It looks like fairy wine and pixie dust and mm-hmm. you know uh, basilisk potions and like there's all of these little things that I think are equally important for uh, you know building up a sense of place about a magical location because like you can just give one or two of them to the players like oh, this is a gift from a fairy or you find something like this or you you know, it's a party favor for attending the Aladrin masquerade or something like that and yeah. they can take it with them it becomes something that maybe someone else in the Feywild is desirous of you can they can use it as a bargaining chip like I think they're just fun and interesting and like especially the adventuring gear there's a lot of stuff in there like you know we said it before there's a lot of stuff in the book <laughs> plenty mm-hmm. of inspirational material and stuff your players yeah. would like well i mean yeah and like you said like i mean um what was it uh, yeah the the fairy butter like if you <laughs> use fairy butter like while cooking or whatever and you eat it like the next time you drop to zero you're automatically stabilized like yeah like that's, interesting that's little nice. items like that <laughs> Where it's just mm-hmm. like it's just we're not in combat right now. We're just making toast in the you know at second yeah. breakfast. Uh, yeah. But it's still going to help you because you know you're going to encounter something later. Like that's uh-huh. the kind of stuff that just kind of it it, it gives more life to the world. And uh, not only that, yeah. uh, I I love the um, the druid soap. 
um, the different <laughs> soaps that druids use to, to bathe themselves in the, the smells of nature, and each mm. one gives you a slightly different thing. Um, right. Or if you don't have enough <laughs> stuff in your knapsack, if you need fairy lip balm, there's many flavors, and each one gives you a little bit of bonus on, to, yeah. to one thing or another. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, very uh, interesting stuff, and because they're like more accessible, they to me really can build up the sense of magic about a place. You know that, that this mm-hmm. is different, uh, and and that's really really where it's valuable to me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, most most definitely. Uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, a little bit something extra there at the end, uh, yeah. y- you know we we already talked about it with the last book, but. It's got some random tables at the back. Yes, I, I, I can't stand picking treasure as a DM. It, it just like I cannot I can't stand it. And and honestly, I I find that campaigns go more smoothly when there's a lot of random treasure generation. Players can just pick and choose what they like and find you different ways to use things. And the difference is that like outside of the DMG, there's very rarely a time when you can just like get the extra stuff plus what's in the dmg with your random tables and they went through the hard work of integrating everything that's in this book with fey themed magic items from the dmg and then arranging Mm -hmm. it according to the the a through i magic tables uh so that when you use the dmg's procedures for randomly generating treasure and you substitute in these tables it's going to incorporate uh, you know, uh, you know the new stuff and the Faye Wild themed uh, old stuff, and I find that really handy. Like that's just, that's just one of those things that I'm like, I look and I see, and it's like that probably was a real slog. <laughs> that yeah. this is not the fun part of of you know creating D and D content of like tapping into your imagination for the lore and everything. It's like just make make these tables, uh, <laughs> and so much respect and appreciation for that and the indices and uh, weapons and armor by rarity. Those are the kinds of things that you miss them when they're not there, um, and and I appreciate them uh, when I when I see them. So yeah, kudos. <laughs> All right, so there so there you go. There's uh, three options for you. Uh, you know, check them out at DMs Guild uh, if you, if you dare, and uh, you know uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, until then, make sure you hit like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and to help out the uh, you know the YouTube al- algorithm as it is, as it, it is the patron that we are all beholden <laughs> right, to. Our patron. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, uh, have a good week. Uh, we'll see you next week.